Hi, I'm K.S. Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Nerd Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the writer, editor, creator, and author, editor, and creator of the comic one-shot series, Endless Hunt, Endless Hunt, Brandon and Noir, Devin Erscott, here to promote the epic fantasy series now live on Kickstarter. Who that's a lot. Okay. Welcome, Devin. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, K.S. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for reaching out to us. But um, outside my introduction, who is Devin Aristotle in his own words? So who am I in my own words? I am a very passionate creator who loves to write comic books, edit comic books, and essentially create my own material. You know, this is something that I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. And to be able to realize my dream as an adult now, it's, it's very, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, fulfilling. So, you know, not a lot of people get to say that they get to do something that they've always envisioned themselves doing. And I'm living that right now. Cool. So what is um, Endless Hunt, Granite, and Noir about? And why did you decide to write them as one shots instead of a full series? So uh, as far as the formats are concerned, one shots seem to be a great entry point um, for new readers. You know, it gives you a chance to see, hey, do I like this story? If not, I can go on to something else. But if it is something that gives you an ability to continue that project outside of just that one shot series. Um, And to give a little insight into each book. So Endless Hunt, which is uh, written by CJ Hudson and the art is done by Rio Burton. Uh, Endless Hunt is basically a fantasy story about a king, Shemu, who goes through uh, various stages to essentially get his wife back from a uh, mystic sorcerer. And as you go through the book, you'll understand what the ultimate you know twist is at the end because there's a lot that happens and it you know seems like things keep repeating themselves. Um, but there's a reason for that. And you'll see when you read the book. Uh, Granite, now that is a very, um, I wouldn't say very mature, but it's a more adult oriented kind of superhero comic book. Think of like Deadpool mixed with like, uh, I ain't gonna say Superman because her standards are far below Superman, but uh, a really strong hero. And she's pretty much like this poster child for everything. She's a partier, she's, you know, fights crime and all that. And she's pretty wild. You know, she's going to have to unfortunately deal with a big change in her life, going from this to an average person and dealing with the ramifications of this big change. And you'll see from the beginning of the book to the end uh, how this change comes about and then what happens from there. And then Noir, which is my book, because CJ actually wrote, uh, Granite and Endless Hunt as well. I wrote Noir, which is my uh, superhero vigilante book, kind of akin to Batman, uh, Batwoman. You know, you got Punisher kind of vibes in there post this issue. Um, But basically, you find Noir, she's at the end of the road when it comes to hunting down her villain that she's going up against. And this is like it. She needs to stop him before he takes out the people that essentially created him so to speak um as he has a personal vendetta like all most villains do and uh it's just a basic you know true to life kind of superhero book that kind of pits you into action really quick and it goes pretty fast like you'll pick up the book you'll read it and you go literally from page one all the way to the end and it's almost as like you know, you got the gist of everything without even needing to have read about this character, say, for 10, 20, 30, 40 issues or decades. It's Each book is pretty much uh, easy pickup, and, you know, it'll leave you feeling some type of way after each set of books. It's just a matter of which one really appeals to you. If you like to try new books, try them all, see which one sticks to you, and let us know how you like things. Because uh, we're very receptive when it comes to our work, when it comes to creating. And we want to know how people feel so that way we know, all right, well, if this didn't work, we'll go do something else. If this mm-hmm. works, we'll keep doing it. You know, it's, it's pretty, you know, 
cut and dry. Yeah. So have you all heard back about this series from anyone? Like which one that you prefer and which, I mean, I guess what the audience wants and what you all want have it lined up with each other. It's like, hey, this is the one we kind of want to go forward with and the audience are really receptive to it. So I would say as far as the audience is concerned, I've seen, well, I've seen a lot of reception to Endless Hunt as that one was like completely done. That's been done since like before summer started. So, you know, the reception to that is cool. Granted, we could probably go through and do some more with that story, like post this one shot. But I think it's um, it's cool to leave it sort of open ended as we did with this one, as opposed to, say, Granite or Noir. And uh, those two books are really kind of dependent on uh, feedback from those folks that may pick it up or see the snippets on the Kickstarter page and, you know, whatever we feel has been, you know, back the most, or we see folks backing and say, oh man, this one looks the greatest. We'll probably end up doing that. But, you know, knowing us, we'll probably just keep doing the other stuff that we feel necessary anyway, because these are stories that we want to tell. So we're going to do them regardless of, you know, if a lot of people love it, a lot of people don't love it. You know, it's a matter of what we feel and, you know, we love these stories. Yeah, that's why I wanted to know. I wanted to know what the readers were uh, uh, gravitating towards, but it's like mm -hmm. at the same time, you all created this stuff. So you like all of it, but like, which one would you want to go forward with more? And if it lined up with, you know, readership, like, you know, and then like, what the one that people are buying the most or mm. that they talk about the most that they give the most yeah. feedback on stuff like that so that's why i wanted to ask you know oh, most what you wanted and what they wanted so from what i've seen so far on the campaign it's it's kind of a tie it's a tie between granite and endless hunt i want to say last time i checked at least but i know granite has been steadily going up in a uh, demand as far as the kickstarter so i think that one is the necessary push as far as what people want to see. And then uh, I think uh, Noir is the outlier and kind of trying to work its way back up to the same level as Noir and Endless Hunt. I think it's just hard for some people to kind of pick and choose because you have three options on this campaign. It's the one that you know looks best to you. And I think Granite is obviously that top choice, Endless Hunt being most likely the next choice. And I think Noir is in last as far as uh, backers, but I'll probably check it out a little bit later. They see who's gravitating towards what, and I can kind of uh, play around with uh, release stuff from there. Mm -hmm. So can you elaborate a little bit more on your creative process and your involvement in uh, Endless Hunt, Granny, and Noir as a whole? So I know you said Noir was the one you wrote, and I'm assuming Endless Hunt and Granny was the one that you were more of an editor on, right? Yeah. So I guess whichever one you feel comfortable with or whichever one you feel like you can explain more, um, just so just from a thought in your head to working on it throughout however many years to now promoting it through Kickstarter. So obviously, since I was the editor on two things, I'm going to uh, gravitate more towards my own book mm -hmm. just because this this is actually something that popped up in my mind a whole year ago, um, roughly. So I was kind of tired of seeing, you know, the same run of the mill stuff in mainstream comics, you know, a bunch of dudes beating up folks. There's there's very few, you know, women protagonists in comics. You know, I loved Batwoman and then Batwoman got canceled twice. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that's one of the series that I really wanted to try to play around with. Like, what, what would happen if I made my own? So I, I kind of sat down, wrote a small outline as to what I wanted from it. Any other influences from, you know, other type of books in that same uh, sphere of influence and then go from there. So my process as far as creating, uh, I usually look at everything that I like and then just compile it into a document and then flesh it out from there. I started off with a one page story with Marcus uh, Jimenez. He's actually the person that did the design for Noir. 
And then he also did the one pager with me. And I think I released that on uh, Ko-Fi when I still had it or something like that. Maybe I just posted it on Twitter just so people could see it. But uh, after that, I was like, well, hey, would you be able to work with me if I had a script? He's like, well, it depends on my timeline. And at the time when I asked him, I had about maybe half of the script done because I was just adamant on getting this book out there. And unfortunately, Marcus and I couldn't you know, work together. So I ended up finding uh, the artist Ben Worrell on Facebook, coincidentally, and I showed him some of the stuff. I asked, uh, could you just do like a one page um, example, ex essentially, mm -hmm. from my script? And we'll see how we go from there. So he did it. I looked at him like, yeah, this is pretty much what I want. And then uh, ever, I think we did it on a two page basis as or as I could, essentially, because, you know, I have a I have a bunch of stuff going on. So it's like I have to split funds between all my projects that I'm working on personally and then say I split whatever I make freelance with my home. So, you know, I put stuff away and I put stuff with creative stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, it took us about a year and some change. So to get all of the book done. And then I was like, well, I want something more. And as a fan of backups in comic books, because there, there aren't many of those uh, running in comic books anymore. I asked CJ um, to provide me with at least six pages. Because originally the story was a quick one and done, like 16 pages of noir. And I wanted like something fun to kind of add to the book in the back. So he threw me a six pager that he had already had finished for granted. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. That actually works out perfectly because you get to see a snippet of granite even more so being a hero as opposed to say, what her personal trials and tribulations in her own one shot were going to be. So you got, you kind of get a double dose of her and mm -hmm. a little bit of noir and you get a hint at uh, noir's uh, future beyond the one shot. I've already, I think I'm on like issue two right now. I started writing it yesterday. I'm already halfway done. So uh, I'm pretty quick when it comes to my creative process. And since I am not uh, stuck at a laptop all day anymore, I take my projects with me mm -hmm. on my phone. So I don't have to wait till I get home to jot something down. I can do it anywhere I'm at. I can work anywhere. And it's very freeing. Most people don't get to do what I do as a creative like that. Most people are kind of beholden to, oh, well, I got to wait till I get home, you know, get on the laptop, jot it down. Oh, maybe I have a piece of paper, jot it down, notes on my phone, jot it. I don't have to do that. I can jot everything down and keep fleshing it out throughout the day until it's done. So I yeah. have a wild creative process. That's what I used to do when I first started writing. I used to write them. Um, I don't write linear. I just write the stuff as it comes to my head. And I used to write them on sticky notes. Like I'm in my office right now. And I'm pretty sure if I look hard enough, I can find the original sticky notes that I had from like 2014, 2015, because I dated them too. I just date oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I date everything. So yeah. Um so yeah, and I, and then I don't think I went to doing it on my phone yet. I don't think the notes app was that advanced yet when um back in 2014. Um but yeah, I would do it when I was like on my lunch break or even when I wasn't on my lunch break, just yeah. make sure my boss wasn't looking. And um <laughs> I would write it and then I would go home and pull like another six hours of writing. So, but I mean, is there anything that you've noticed about, um, I guess your writing style or even how you edit um, that you weren't expecting with Noir and then you're working on the second one right now. So when I say notice anything, I mean like art style that you see is going to change or the storylines. Um, I know maybe you're still working with the same collaborators. Like, is there any changes in it from the first one to the second one, or even when you initially first started writing it to now that you see that you weren't expecting to see? Um, for the most part, I, I was actually surprised 
to see uh, my essentially my growth from when I initially, you know, started to do this and, you know, plan to have an ongoing series or maybe a, even a bunch of limited series for the character. And I looked at the script probably, what, on Sunday, just to compare it to uh, issue one, which I already written. And I'm like, wow, this is a uh, vastly different, you know, there's more content in issue one by like four pages, but I'm probably going to maybe add some more or maybe add some more backups because I really love those. And I just, I made everything sort of kind of interpersonal and you kind of, uh, man, I, I really bounce back and forth between her heroic guys and like her civilian guys. I, I do it more so I think in issue two, just because, you know, I'm not going to give too much of a spoiler, but her day job is, kind of important like where she lives so to try to do what she does at night and then turn around and do the exact opposite of that uh that that made me reflect on some things and how that dynamic would work and uh it, it really shows i try to stay with the same collaborators throughout unless something comes up like you know they got something else going on and i can't get a hold of them for that uh, time frame, but for the most part, everybody's schedules pretty aligned well. You know, we can schedule artwork from say October to December, and things will be fine. You know, same with colors, same with you know lettering, which I leave for last anyway because it's kind of a burden to try to do it as you go. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take up too much of my letterer's time. So, but no, my style has actually, at least for the book is concerned this one has really uh advanced in a whole year and then i edit my own stuff typically although i'm probably going to get out of that eventually because it's going to take up a lot more time for me to self-edit and i have a lot of stuff that i'm trying to do in the next two years so it's, i'm trying not to go through it but i do have a process where i'll do 10 pages i'll do 10 pages and i'll edit that 10 pages so after I put like dialogue or whatever, I go through it, make sure it flows all right. So from each panel to how the plot is supposed to work, I go through all that, I make sure it sounds good. Then I do the next say five or 10 pages or however long uh, the script is. I try to be concise with my work because that way I don't have any crazy mishaps later. And if somebody notices it when they read the book, when it's finished, then I can go back and say, maybe, hey, could we just redo this page real quick? And then, you know, go from there, as opposed to me having to not figure it out super early on in the process. And then having all these issues when I'm trying to get, say, our colors and all that done later, because that, that's a big burden to me. I don't like to have to double back on things. I like to just do it, get it done, and keep going. Mm -hmm. So, what advice would you offer to other creators you wish someone would have told you when you first started oh this one is actually very important i i think i say this a lot now please 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 don't try to do a full-fledged script when you have little experience always start small start very small i'm not talking like 20 pages that ain't small that's a full project I'm talking like one page or two page or five, 10 being the maximum, because if you can master telling a story in less amount of pages, then you're absolutely ready to tackle a bigger page count. Most people don't understand that. Everybody wants to give you their magnum opus right away. I'm unfortunately one of those people, but it worked out for me, luckily. Um, most people don't get that. And I see a lot of younger creators, or they could be older than me, people just starting out rather, uh, making this mistake. Everybody wants to come out hard with the heaviest, you know, plot and great, you know, idea that they have. And then once it's done, everybody's looking at it all negative, like, because there's, there's clearly uh, no refinement in their craft. Refine your craft first, then move on. Don't try to just give everybody you know, full throttle work, you know, out the gate. And like I said, I got lucky. I wrote essentially what my magnum opus is in 
I got lucky because everybody likes it and I don't understand how I, I, I kind of understand how it, now that I'm, you know, out of that mentality and I look at my own work, I try not to, mm -hmm. but I look at it and I see like, wow, this is really good. And I've written for a lot of people. I've written a lot of stuff for myself to, to see everybody else saying it's good versus just me thinking it's good. Clo clearly shows my talent. And if you don't refine yourself well with a shorter page count before you start doing all these, you know, great ideas you got, you're probably going to have people, you know, tell you, hey, look, you need to refine your stuff again and go back over it because this ain't it. And I urge all you folks that are listening to this and are trying to start your, you know, first project. You know, start out with a couple pages, you know, one to four page script. If you can tell a story in about one to four pages, you're good. I did a couple one pages after the fact and it worked out pretty good. So if it works, it works. And I think you can do it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you finally coming around to appreciating your own work not only shows your talent, but it also shows your your growth in a way. Um as a writer and an editor, even as a reader, you know, um, being able to spot your mistakes, even to spot, you know, as I said, be, as I, you know, the previous question I asked you, the 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 things that have changed over the years um, when you are creating your stories, stuff that you wouldn't have spotted before, the um, uh, uh, how you create your stories, your storylines and stuff like that. Again, you probably wouldn't have noticed or even cared for in the beginning, but as you, you know, everything is practice, right? So even as you write and edit for other people, you know, you take all of that and you apply it to your own work. And, you know, like, you, like I said before, you see your mistakes, you see your growth in it. And now you come out on the other side and really genuinely appreciate everything that you've put into it. You know, like I've written two books. I'm working on the third one right now. And the first one is just like, it's kind of foreign to me in a way. Like I don't, a lot of this, I don't really remember writing or it's like my very first thing I've ever written ever. Right. Right. And then the second one, um, I wrote quicker, but it took me longer to publish it for various reasons. But um, after the finished product and after the years have passed, I read it again and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Again, like writing it quicker and then having a lot of time pass afterwards before I went back to it just to read it again. And I actually had to edit the book myself. So um because I, I mean, I paid for an editor, but then like there was some stuff that she didn't spot, but it wasn't a whole lot of mistakes or anything like that. I would still use her again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really appreciate it, which I couldn't really do in the, in the first one. I think having something to compare the second one, um, having, yeah, having something to compare the second one to helps out a lot as well. And you know, where someone who first starting out they may have like something they jotted down or um, maybe something they collaborated on but wasn't their actual work. So they don't really have anything to compare it to. And then when they first start out um, working on a full, whatever it may be, um, they get kind of timid and they don't really know what they're doing. There's a bunch of mistakes and maybe they can't afford an editor or collaborator or whatnot. You know, a lot of it is just, like I said, it's just practice and just going for it. And then you just, Realizing you're going to make a bunch of mistakes, which I feel like a lot of people just don't want to make a bunch of mistakes, especially if yep. they're costly. But I mean, that's kind of how you, you move forward and grow. So that was my really long winded response. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. You know, I, I like hearing, you know, how everyone else works through their own material, you know, when it comes to the creative process. Not everybody is the same. And I, you know, I like hearing everybody else's story because you know what, that's what makes us all relatable. We all have, uh, you know, an origin story essentially into how we got into our creative field. 
And to share these stories with one another is not only enriching for us because we get to hear what other folks have gone through, but we can share, you know, ways to kind of go about making this thing really work for us. A lot of people don't want to hear uh, a lot of this stuff because some folks, unfortunately, are hard headed and they have to figure it out for themselves. And, you know, that's that's just life. So we learn through our day to day experiences. And if you don't take everything into consideration as to what could have been and what, you know, could have propelled you a little further, what held you back, whatever, if you don't take the time to reflect on these things, then obviously these uh, obstacles will continually be in front of you instead of you knocking them down one by one once you've figured out what needs to be done to, you know, push you forward. Mm-hmm. So outside of working as a uh, writer and editor of these three, Endless Hunt, Granite, and Noir, how well do you find balance for your life? And how do you typically manage your mental well-being when you become stressed, frustrated, or overwhelmed? So outside of all of this stuff, I typically, you know, I have a nine, well, I guess you can say a nine to five job, a regular job outside of just creating period. You know, I got a wife and son at home that, you know, I love dearly and to try to manage, you know, everything together. Cause I do comics every day, seven mm-hmm. days a week, every day. Um, so it's, you know, it's a lot of scheduling essentially for myself. So I try to do a little bit of, say, creative stuff before I come to work. But at the same time, I also leave time to spend time with my family before work, too. Once I get here, I do uh, I try to do my job as best I can at work. When I'm on my breaks, I do my, you know, any freelance stuff I do. Uh, and then once I get home, if I fill up to it, I'll do more creative stuff with 90 percent of the time. I try to take a break because at the beginning of my career, I was just on go. Mm. And it's like, I didn't know how to take breaks. I didn't know how to really de-stress. You know, I I love reading, you know, books, whether it's comic books, novels, whatever. I like to read, even, you know, news. I'll read it, even though most folks feel that the news is boring. I like to look at it all. So... I try to leave little pockets of space throughout my day to, you know, just sit down, breathe, not focus on, say, what I'm doing in that moment. And then once it's time to snap out of that, I can go about my day as if nothing was wrong, you know. And I've essentially tried to cut out working comics every day. It's kind of hit or miss. Some weekends I find myself working nonstop. Some weekends, shoot, I'm I'm sleep like this past weekend. I slept all weekend, and I was like, "Wow, this is probably the most sleep I've gotten in years." So it's just, it's nice to have moments like that. Do I always encourage folks to, you know, take time out for yourself. It's not worth killing yourself to get to whatever point uh, you are trying to reach. It's, it's not worth all that. Look, I, I am a certified workaholic. I work, work, work as much as I can so that way I can get to where I'm at. But I, I've actually propelled myself further than most folks that come into the comic book industry uh, in less time. So, yeah, just, just try to take breaks. I'm That's all I really can do. Once I finally get to a place where I feel like I ain't got to work all the time, trust me, it'll be like an endless break to me. And mm-hmm. I won't know what to do with myself. Um, well, um, could you discuss some uh, rewards for potential backers for the for the one shots? There's uh the Kickstarter is now up. It should be up until it's like what 29 days? I think we left? have like 20, 26, 27 days. days left. Yeah, so it'll it'll be there until I think what the the, the sixth of September. Fourth, right. So and then right. yeah, and then Labor Day is what the Tuesday? I think. Yep. Yeah. So pretty much the day before Labor Day, September fourth. So yeah. Um. Could you, I guess, discuss for rewards for uh, potential backers? Sure. 
So to start, for those folks that don't like unnecessary clutter in the house, you know, that prefer digital material, we have two tiers for y'all. So we have a standard uh, digital comics package. It comes with uh, the, you know, the first three issues of these books, essentially, all three one shots. That's about 10 bucks. But if you really want to go for it, we have a tier that's 20 bucks. You get over 10 plus books along with those three. So you actually get more for, you know, your money backing at the tier because, A, you don't have to buy all the books on the campaign at, you know, a physical price. And, you know, you don't have to get something in the mail or nothing that comes straight to your inbox. And you also get a bunch of great indie titles from a lot of independent creators that I am somewhat friends with. Some of them, other folks, you know, I just want to give them opportunity so that way they can showcase their work. So if you like a lot of material, I suggest going for that $20 package because you'll get over 10 books in that package alongside the three one shots. We also have a physical tier for each book. They're all cover A's. So, you know, if you like standard covers of the physical books for Granite Noir and Endless Hunt, you have those options. Then we have some special covers uh, and they, they actually range from, well, actually Endless Hunt and Granite both have a lot of covers. So you have a lot of cover options for that, but we have our B side. So cover B's for three books. Then we have two special cover C's for uh, both Endless Hunt and then Granite. So they both have a cover C. And then we have some more exclusive like stuff uh, past that at 200 bucks. You can get pretty much everything on the campaign. <laughs> Excuse me. So any extra stuff that might pop up, you know, as an add-on or as a reward, you'd get that. Um, if you want to invest in Epic Fantasy and get everything for 18 months and get a two-page story in my monthly newsletter, then we have a tier for that as well. And I'd work alongside you to make your story essentially come to life. So I'd work with you on the scripting. I'd edit it for you, send it back and all that, you get everything on the campaign just as the tier on, uh, under it. And then we also have a tier above all of that, that's a one of one, is basically our epic fantasy uh, super fan, I like to call it. And this is this is like the most exclusive of them all because you since you get everything, so basically you get everything that we offer on the campaign, period. So you get that, you know, you get everything for 18 months that we might create, which is a, actually a steal. Um, you get that two page story in the newsletter. And on top of that, you'll get some exclusive rewards that no one else will be able to have, like period. And I, I'm actually excited about this one because there's some stuff in there that I'm really excited about, but I can't explicitly tell folks unless somebody grabs it. And if you grab it, you'll know exactly what it is once you get that package. But this is essentially everything that we offer on here. And uh, there's a bunch of different add-ons. I know you can add on pretty much every book on the campaign. Then we have uh, our last campaign's book uh, called Bearer of Ages, which was a sci-fi fantasy book with an all-woman cast. And, uh, and that actually was our best-selling book at my first convention earlier this year, too. Oh, wow. So. I, I highly suggest folks that really like um, books that span more than one era. So you don't just get you know, present day story, you get the past and the future. I, I I love that book with all my heart. And it I think we have cover A of that on the campaign as an add-on. And then you also get it as a part of the bigger packages uh, starting at the $200 tier and up. So basically you'll get that book and anything else we decide to you know throw in there for folks. Fantastic. Well, all right. I want to thank again, the writer, editor, and creator of the comic one-shot series, uh, Endless Hot, Granite, and Noir, Devin Erskott, for joining us here today to promote the Epic Fantasy, 
fantasy series now live on Kickstarter until September 4th. Uh, all of Devin's socials and website will be listed in this episode's details alongside the Kickstarter link for those who are interested. Again, I'm K.S. Garner, and you have been listening to the Solo Network Podcast. Thank you. <laughs>